Hello there. I hope you guys are hanging in. Uh, I am just doing this as a test run, but I'm going to try and cover week two, which is the first week of this course, and uh, just talk generally about what we are trying to do as a group. There are 13 of you registered in the course, and each of you has four units, um, and we're using a tutorial system. I decided to do it audio. At any point, if we want to do it video, we can discuss it, and of course we can do that. But I think at this stage, video works. I mean, audio works. Um, and you have two assignments each week, and you have to write basically about half a page for each of the assignments and hand it in. And that basically counts you know, towards the, uh, the course marks, basically the attendance marks. Uh, and also at some stage, we can decide what we want to do with all those resources. We could share them, uh, but if not, you know, obviously you've done the work and you have input into those topics. Now, halfway through the course, you're gonna write a five uh, side, I think, five side, five page one side uh, essay on a topic taken from the first half of the course. It can be any topic or it can be a combination of several topics. So as a suggestion for instance, uh, some of you might want to compare one or several of the previous pandemics and how these compare with COVID-19. But on the other hand, you know, maybe you have a favorite topic there, Spanish flu, uh, Black Death, or ones that have yet to come in the first half of this course. You're free to do whatever you want, and then the, that mark is out of 35, and then the course proceeds. The second half of the course is essentially the same, and then you'll have a final paper, same, same length, five sides, um, of a topic from the second half of the course or it can be a combination of topics from the second half of the course. So that's what we've got set up. Uh, uh, I think it's doing okay. I'm going to look for more feedback on this, anything else we can do. I am giving you additional reading material. Uh, it's entirely up to you if you want to pursue it. Uh, certainly if once you've picked a topic some of that additional material could be quite useful and of course you're encouraged to take it even further and pursue additional material. All the way through the course I'm giving you information uh, which we'll probably cover later in the course. We will come to coronaviruses and COVID-19. We'll come to uh, vaccination and other methods of combating um, pandemics of different types. I think what we've been able to see so far is comparing uh, historical plague, which, which was actually a succession of plagues, uh, Black Death being the most infamous, um, but also um, right up to the present day, there are plagues. And so we've looked at Yersinia pestis. And what's interesting there is that uh, these plagues have been around for a long time. And uh, we're still working on methods to basically control these. As it's a bacterium, a bacterial pathogen, we are able to use antibiotics, but one of the, one of the, the students in this course was the first to say, I found a paper where uh, you know, they recorded um, multiple drug resistance, and that was neat. So that's the kind of thing, you know, as you pursue something you're interested in, and then I checked that out further and found additional information. So here we have, you know, a good example of where the plague is still with us. Uh, it can be traced back to the 7th century and undoubtedly it was there before then. We're still working on effective control measures. And a vaccine also has not yet occurred. So it gives us a perspective, uh, an important perspective. Okay. Uh, the first paper we studied, which was from the New, New England uh, Medical Journal, was a reaction to the early days of the COVID-19 epidemic. And it went through all the different 
uh, reactions of people and of society and authorities. And we were able to see that essentially it follows the same same guidelines. So if, as an example, if you want to look at uh, the Black Death or the um, Spanish flu, we see similar, similar principles and similar reactions of society and of the scientists of the time, you know, to how to control this, including behavior that wasn't going to work, such as uh, discussion that's going on right now, which is, uh, you know, breaking the self-isolation. And as you, as you were able to see in these examples that we followed last week and this week, when you break isolation, essentially, typically, things get worse. So Yersinia pestis was, you know, the pathogen we studied last week. Uh, it's evolved from a related uh, species, which is also a disease-causing agent, causes a disease similar to uh, scarlet fever. So it evolved, and in that process, it's produced an, uh, multiple ways of attacking the host. Uh, we discussed about the two plas plasmids that are characterized, and actually have mutations in the activator of one of those plasmids that basically further increase the uh, virulence and the inherent pathogenicity of, uh, of this pathogen. Uh, we, we discovered, we also looked at other aspects of virulence and what we discover is that the pathogen has evolved multiple methods of in fact successfully attacking its host. So this would be, you know, a sobering um, reminder that epidemics are not new. They've been around for centuries. And essentially, despite modern science and the ability to characterize these things, uh, you know, down to molecular levels and look at whole genomes in the case of uh, the Spanish flu uh, virus, which we now know is H1N1, uh, that we still have a long way to go uh, with H1N1 for instance this week we're going to learn that we don't have uh, a vaccine, an effective vaccine yet um, so I think this is pretty exciting what we've discovered uh, the next uh, video I'll talk in more detail about Yersinia and then the third video we will talk about the Spanish flu and then the fourth video I'll cover H1N1. Uh, so I hope you're enjoying this course. Please, you know, let me know by email or in our discussions uh, what you've learned, what you'd like to learn. I'm with you on this. Uh, we're using a tutorial system which was originally developed at Oxford University. And the principle of a tutorial system is that everyone is equal. You have an instructor, you have a professor, or you have a tutor, that's me. But the idea isn't that I should be telling you what's going on. It's not like a lecture. You basically are going to come up with the background and you're going to post questions. And the idea is to motivate the group to pursue this topic even further than that one week report you do on the individual topics. Uh, I posted a couple of videos about tutorials and the second one basically points out that it's a completely different educational process because if you take it seriously what it does is it, in, it makes you uh, delve into the topic uh, and you can go as deep as you want. You can stay with just what's posted and the additional reading material if you so so like, uh, or you can go even deeper if you decide, for instance, that this is a topic that you want to develop for your five, five page uh, midterm. And uh, in doing that, you are becoming an expert. And the idea is that you will become an expert as good, if not better than most people you would talk to. Even people like professors who are in microbiology, uh, even perhaps in the area we're covering, 
than many of the virologists, that you, in, in many cases, will have more up-to-date, uh, more in-depth knowledge. And that's what we're trying to achieve. Uh, how far you want to go, it's up to you. It's, it's your process. You put in as much time and effort as you're required to do. If there are areas where you would like to f do more, then you can also, also do that, obviously. You're a free agent in that sense, but the point is, uh, try and use it as a mechanism to use your thought processes, uh, put together your understanding, and in that process, you are actually developing your mind, your inquiring mind as an analyst, as a scientist, as a historian, whatever you want to be in the future, you are being educated in a way, you know, different from just facts. Yes, facts are important, but in this case, you're going to assemble facts, process them, and the idea with the, um, what you submit is that you submit a question, or if you want more than one question, and in that process, you are actually revealing that you have a fundamental understanding, and in that question, ideally, you're basically asking what more we need to learn. Maybe we don't need any, maybe we don't know as much as we should, or maybe it's just a cue for others, plus yourself, plus myself, to further pursue things which are raised in the tutorial. The time for the tutorial, each tutorial is 40 minutes, and that basically uh, was as it was set up when I kind of signed on to this Zoom process. And it seems I think that's perfectly adequate because I think attention span is probably not much better than 25, 30 minutes anyway. So it's an intense process and I'll use the video process and post them on YouTube to basically go through some of these things. Not from a lecture point of view, but to kind of raise the issues and the questions which come up as the course proceeds. So please enjoy this course. I'm enjoying it. I want you to enjoy it. And uh, I'm getting reports coming back at one or two o'clock in the morning, by the way. I'm not sure with, with that reflects just that, you know, you've got so much to do or that it reflects enthusiasm. enthusiasm. But I'm reading the latter. So this is all I want to say this time. Uh, Let's enjoy this course and uh, pursue knowledge and in that process you will develop as thinking people. You will develop your skills, right? In whatever, you know, career you pursue, this will give you advantages. And uh, knowledge itself, you have it, but you don't have to retain it, remember it. You just can, you know, basically save what you want to save or even just save, you know, links to the articles. It's entirely up to you. Okay, that's all I have to say. And I'm going to learn how to switch this off. Hopefully I manage as I'm self-recording this. Bye for now.